Hey, what's going on everyone? So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Deluxe, if you want to call it that, Deluxe Cobb Vant from The Mandalorian. So I ordered this from Amazon last October. It was supposed to arrive on the 5th, got pushed back to the 21st, and then showed up on the 12th. So I'm happy it's finally here. And of course it comes in the deluxe size galaxy packaging. You got Star Wars The Black Series up top. Through the window you can see Cobb Vanth with the dinged up Boba Fett armor. And I think that does look pretty good. You got a blaster rifle that is an A280 and a blaster pistol which is the HF94. Pretty cool pistol. And you got the helmet and the jetpack. So about the same amount of accessories that other figures come with that aren't deluxe. But what can you do? On this side of the box the front window wraps around and then you have Star Wars The Black Series again down there. And there's the sign with the artwork. Great looking picture. I absolutely just love this picture. Very nice. In the background, you can see the crate Dragon. Got some Tusken Raiders there. And then you got the orange color for the Mandalorian line. And of course, Cobb Vanth down there. But that is a really, really good looking picture of Cobb Vanth. You've got a pretty sizable window on the top of the box. On the bottom, you've got the barcode, some logos, and then this mouse print. And there's the back of the box. Same picture as the side, only bigger. You got a short bio in five different languages. Cobb is number 18 in this Mandalorian line. And then you got some warnings down there that no one gives two spits and half a fart about. And since I'm on the back of the box, I'll just read the bio real quick. It just says, the Marshal of Mos Pelgo, a small town on Tatooine, Cobb Vanth has earned the trust of the townsfolk as a capable peacekeeper and leader. All right, I'm gonna get Cobb Vanth and all of his accessories out of the box and let's take a look at him. All right, so here is Cobb Vanth out of the box. And let me just go ahead and point out now, this thing has some issues. Um, I've already contacted Amazon. They're gonna send me a replacement, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the review using this one. But this gauntlet here where it joins the arm snapped off, the whole forearm just snapped off right out of the box. So I managed to jam it back on there. The right knee is completely frozen. I've tried boiling water. I tried a hair dryer. I can't get it to bend and the swivel is locked. It is fused. <laughs> so yeah, and also I'll just go ahead and point out that the rangefinder on the helmet is bent. Yeah, that's, yeah, the helmet's pretty much parallel to the desk here. This rangefinder is bent. Yeah, it's got some issues, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the review because I do love the look of the figure. It's just this one's got some problems. So yeah, let's get into this. All right, so let's start up here with his head and his face. And I think this looks pretty good. I think that is a pretty good Timothy Oliphant likeness. The hair looks nice. It has a nice, you know, wash throughout to make it look, you know, kind of two-toned gray and dark. Yeah, it looks fine. I think the, now the beard may be a little too gray, you know, but it's okay. But the eyes and the nose and the mouth, I think look pretty good. It's not bad. The ears, not bad. Yeah, there's the back of the head. Yeah, from the neck up, yeah, I like this. And then we have this little scarf or ascot, whatever you want to call it. It's a separate piece. It lays okay. Sometimes it wants to move with the head, like when you turn the head, sometimes it winds up looking like that. Yeah, um, but it's all right. If it's just sitting there, it's, it's not bad. And then moving on to the armor. So I think they did a nice job on this. The dirty, worn, scratched up look looks nice. The green barely showing through and it's just worn down to nothing and I kind of like this the FET symbol very nice and it just kind of comes up and over his shoulders now the back is <laughs> it's nice and green but you know most likely you're gonna have the jetpack on so I'm okay with this but yeah this is a super clean back here but this armor on the front does look pretty good and I think this gray sleeveless thing that he has on underneath the armor looks nice some great wrinkles in here just kind of comes up and over some nice detail there. There it is in the back. Some wrinkles back here. And of course the shoulder pads are attached on top right there. Great scratches, great hoses. So these hoses are a little bit longer than say Boba Fett's because it's, you know, it's attached up here and they come down. So they kind of change these hoses, but I'm pretty sure these are the same gauntlets from Return of the Jedi Boba. And I think the weathering right here looks nice. It's just maroon back here. It, it would have been nice if they would have scratched up the whole thing, but these scratches look pretty good. And on the left side, you got the same kind of shoulder pad with the mythosaur symbol. Sleeve comes down. So the, the texture on the sleeves is pretty cool. Got these little knobbies on it. This is, it's got a great feel to it. I like it. So yeah, some great wrinkles. And then you have this gauntlet, which is the same gauntlet as Return of the Jedi Boba. 
They painted the rocket silver, got some great weathering in here. They did not paint any of this. Some more scratches on this side. And then of course the inside is just maroon. So it's, it's kind of unfortunate that they didn't paint more than just this. In fact, I think they marketed this figure as a deluxe because of paint. Well, there's not a whole lot of paint on it. I mean, <laughs> this, this looks good. The scratches here look good, but apart from that, there's really not a, a whole lot of, say, premium, uh, what's the word they use? Premium deco, which is a silly word. Premium deco, there's really not a lot of it, but yeah, it's fine for what it is. And then coming down to the belt. So the belt is pretty devoid of paint. I mean, there's some great detail in there. All in here comes around. Nice detail back here. Yeah, I like that. There's the back of the holster. Got a nice little pouch there, some studs. This little thing going on. There's the holster, kind of a light brown color. And then you have, I think this is his little Marshall symbol. I think this looks nice. Then you have a little pouch there. Yeah, the belt looks good. I would have loved to have seen some more paint. And there's a little hook right there. Um, he does not have a lightsaber. Now, I guess if you were to, you know, bend the arm and have the helmet, you could use this hook to kind of hold the helmet. Yeah, it's kind of odd to put a hook on a belt like this, but I can see how it could be useful in, you know, posing with the helmet. And the pants are just brown pants. I mean, you got a little bit of white there, but there's, there's no paint on it. I mean, they're just brown pants. But you do have some really nice detail in there. I mean, this looks good. These little canisters, you know, they should have painted these, at least the lids, you know, silver or something. But the wrinkles look good. Pockets, um, that's the back, got all this sculpted in there. That looks pretty nice. Pocket, this little thing, would have been great if they would have put a little extra paint in there if they want to go, if they want to say this is deluxe because of paint. The back looks great. I mean, some great wrinkles. Pocket. Something going on over here. Got this little flap sticking up. Yeah, the, the sculpt is great. I just wish they would have at least like weathered it or put some paint here and there. And then you have this little yellow knee guard on the right knee. Now mine is not glued on on this side right there. This is just kind of flopping in the breeze. Um, I mean, I, I think I got a bad one. It's obvious. <laughs> Comment below if yours is like this or maybe glued on the you know, like glued on this side, but not glued on the other side. It's kind of weird that they only glued one side. But yeah, mine is just kind of floating in the breeze. And, you know, like I mentioned, this knee is completely fused. But yeah, the paint looks pretty good on it, though. You know, the scratches are very nice. It just, um, it just wants to sit funny. And it would have been nice if they would have painted these little things here. You know, it's just, it's just yellow. And the boots, you know, they got some great straps going on, some nice wrinkles, great detail on the soles down here. The tops look pretty good, but again, there is no weathering. There's no paint whatsoever on these boots, but I do love the look of them. So from top to bottom, it's a pretty good looking figure. It just doesn't have near as much paint as I thought it would have on it. You know, as far as uh, bringing out any kind of detail, you know, like there, some weathering on the pants, some weathering on the boots. It would have been nice to see, but I think overall, it's a good looking figure. All right, so let's run through articulation on Cobb Vant. So we do have some side to side at the head. You can see how the scar for the ascot just moves with it. And you do have some really good down, some really good up. There's the scarf moving. Boop, yeah, it wants to get trapped behind the neck. Yeah, some really good up and down and some great tilt. So these shoulder pads just flex up so the arms can get up that far and they can rotate all the way around. And he's got some pretty good butterfly joints there too. So for the right arm, if you move the hoses to here, he gets just to 90. That's a little disappointing. And you've got a swivel at the elbow and there's a swivel at the wrist. And for the left arm, I'm really nervous about moving this thing because this whole lower arm wants to just come off. But the left arm gets a little bit past 90. Yeah, that's not too bad. And of course you have a swivel at the elbow there. There's a pretty good up and down hinge on the right hand and a side to side hinge on the left. So as far as midsection, you've got some twist, you've got a little bit of crunch, some pretty good back, and some very good side to side tilt. The legs can get up that far. They go way out. They don't go back at all. There's an upper thigh swivel. Single knees that get up that far, and you have a swivel at the knee joint, but not on the right side, not on this one. And as far as feet, they go down that far. They go up to just to there, and you've got some swivel at the ankle. So next, let's take a look at his accessories. So this is his heavy blaster pistol, the HF-94. It is just cast in a very dark gray, almost black plastic. 
it's pretty good. I mean, you got some pretty good detail going on in here. Got a little scope up top. It's like a big old revolver almost. Got a little thing on the end of the grip there. Little trigger sculpted in there. Pretty much the same on both sides. Yeah, it's just a big old pistol. And I, I, I think it looks pretty good. And as far as Cobb Vanth holding this blaster pistol, that goes in. The right hand is a little loose, uh, or at least this one is. Uh, but he does hold that pretty well. I mean, just firing straight out, that does not look bad at all. And as far as gunslinger fashion, you know, firing from the hip, I think that looks pretty nice. I mean, if you get these hoses out of the way, you can get the elbow just to 90, and that's not a bad look there. And let's see how the holster works. So the pistol will drop in there, super tight. There we are. Yeah, that looks very good. It is very secure. There is no possible way that's gonna just fall out. And yeah, I love the look of that. And there's a good look at the A280 that he comes with, the blaster rifle. It would have been nice to see a little bit of weathering on this. You know, it's just dark gray, almost black plastic, but I do love the detail. The wraps look pretty good. You know, nice detail there. And on the grip, yeah, it's a very cool rifle. Just wish it had a little bit of weathering on it. And as far as him holding this rifle, that'll drop in just like that. Trigger finger right through the trigger guard. Yeah, that looks very nice. I doubt you would ever fire a weapon like this with one hand, but he can hold it in one hand. And as far as two hands, Sadly, this is about all you're going to get. This elbow, that's as far as it goes. You know, there's no way to get this rifle up to his face, you know, to make him aim down the scope. And it's unfortunate, but he can fire low. And I think that does look pretty good, you know, from all angles, front, side, that side. It's not bad, but man, I really wish there was more range in this right elbow because you just, there's just no way to get it up there, sadly. If you rotate it, try to get the stock up at least to his shoulder. It just ain't happening. Uh, let's see. Hang on. Stand by. All right. So you can do something like this. The stock is right up here at his shoulder now. It just flex the shoulder out a little bit. But from the front, it looks kind of silly. From the side, it's not terrible. But from the front, nah. I don't like that. I'm a, I think you're probably going to have to just keep the thing low, which is not a bad look. And here's a look at the jet pack. And I kind of like the look of this. It's very colorful. You know, they probably could have flattened the colors out a little more. It's very vibrant, but it does look pretty good. The blues and the reds and the yellows. Some silver there where they made the repair. Yeah, that looks good. The scratches look pretty good. The jets can turn. I mean, obviously, this is the same jet pack as Boba Fett, the uh, deluxe Boba Fett. Now, of course, the rocket is different. Okay, there's your rocket. Now, I did an Instagram video, and I'm sure some of you saw that that are watching this. And I will admit that I made a mistake on that. I said the rocket falls out very easily. Well, you do have to push down. And right out of the box, mine did not want to go down. Like I said, I got a funky one. <laughs> but I finally just mashed the thing in there. And it stays much better now. Yeah, it kind of snaps in. So that was on me. Um, but yeah, the rocket, I think, looks pretty good. They got some nice white and red and gray. It's a good-looking rocket. You know, different from Boba Fett's rocket. And there is the uh, the inside with the three pegs to hold it on his back. And that's what the bottom looks like. I don't know if that yellow blob is supposed to be there or not, but I have a yellow blob right there. But you got some yellow down here. And this being the same pack as Deluxe Boba, the flame effects will fit in here. Um, it's a pretty cool jet pack. I'll, yeah, I'd have to say I like this. Now, putting this on his back is a little bit different story. The pegs don't quite want to line up. These top pegs, you really have to just mash. And again, comment below if yours is, <laughs> yours is a little easier to put on than mine. There. Okay. At least it's there. At least it's secure. That's not going anywhere. I mean, I could drop this thing off a building, and I don't think this jetpack's going to fall off. Yeah, that looks pretty good on him. That's a, yeah, I got no complaints there. And last but not least, here is the helmet. And I do love the look of this helmet, the scratches and the colors. I'm still bummed that the rangefinder's crooked. You know, it does articulate, but it's it's just not straight. But the colors are very nice. The silver, the green, the maroon, the scuffed up scratches, I think all look really good. The orange there is very nice. Silver back here, all the scratches just look great. And I think the overall shape of it is very nice. So yeah, it's a good looking Boba Fett helmet. And as far as putting this on his head, it literally just drops on his head. It's a little loose too. It kind of moves all over the place. It's not just going to fall off, but it is very loose on his head. And I think that looks okay. I mean, as far as proportions, I mean, yes, it looks a little funny. But if you remember in the show, Cobb Vanth 
looked a little ridiculous wearing this armor. Everything was so out of proportion because it's not his armor. So I'm okay with the look of this, you know, the helmet kind of sitting high like that, you know, this little gap here. I think that looks okay. I think from the side, it looks pretty good. And um, yeah, this, this looks nice. I'm kind of pleased with this. And as far as posing him, just holding the helmet, that hook actually comes in handy. Uh, yeah, I'm glad that's there. I mean, the fingers do kind of sort of wrap around the, the underside of the helmet right there. But that actually looks pretty good. I mean, that's not a bad look at all with the blaster down by his side, the pistol holstered, jetpack on, and just holding the helmet, him kind of looking off to the side. That's actually a very nice look, but I'm pleased with that hook. And that's what he looks like on the shelf. I just stuck him next to Mando there, and the Tusken Raider there. I have to admit, this figure does look really nice on the shelf, him just holding the helmet like that. As far as height, he's a little bit taller than Mando. Of course, he's taller than a Tusken Raider, taller than Ahsoka. So yeah, that this is a great looking figure for sure. I mean, it's unfortunate that I got a bad one and I will be getting a replacement, but yeah, it, it does look nice on the shelf, you have to admit. So overall, I'm pretty happy with this figure. I mean, setting the QC issues aside, I mean, I, I will be getting a replacement, but this figure does look pretty good. I don't think it's worth the deluxe price. I mean, I, I really don't think it's a deluxe. I mean, there should be no reason why they charged that much for this figure. I mean, this paint does look good. The paint on the helmet looks great. But apart from that, I mean, there's really nothing premium about this figure, really. I mean, the pants are just brown pants. Boots are very plain. The belt could have really used a lot more paint and, you know, details. The gauntlets look pretty good. The little knobbies on his sleeves are very nice. Jetpack is cool. You know, I'm, I'm fine with the jetpack. I think the Timothy Oliphant likeness is pretty good. You know, it's not bad. But charging a deluxe price for this figure, no. I, I, yes. And, and yes, I bought it, but mm, it's not a deluxe. But apart from that, the figure does look pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it overall. I'm happy that Amazon will be sending me a replacement because of the fused knee and this thing being a little squirrely and the bent rangefinder. You know, that's, you know, I'm, I'm hopefully going to get a better one. But please comment below. I want to hear from you guys and let me know what you think of Cobb Vanth from The Mandalorian. And if you like videos on Star Wars The Black Series, please consider dropping a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and please turn on notifications. I would certainly appreciate it. And I just thank you all so much for watching and we'll just see y'all next time.